So here we are on your Schoology page. Um, on your social justice page, remember this is your go-to folder, semester project, materials, and assignments. So let's check this out together. We're gonna look at the instructions that I modified slightly this morning. So make sure that you check out the new and modified instructions. All right, here we go. Just gonna go through some key points in this again. So they're all on the same page, um, though this should not be entirely new to you. So you've been researching a social justice issue of your choice. Um, you're gonna create a newsletter um, that includes all of these elements, all of these 10 elements. I recommend you use these templates, Lucid Press or Microsoft Publisher. I don't have a strong preference. If you have another template that works well, you can go ahead and use it. Um, just make sure that you can have as many pages as you need. Some apps have a limit on their pages that you can use uh, to create a newsletter. So if you are using Lucid Press, if you have not already registered, make sure that you select that you're a student because then you can get a really good package for free. I don't want you to have to pay for anything. And that should be possible. Okay, so in your newsletter, you need to include an introduction, which you've already done. So some, most of these things you've already done, you're probably gonna go back and maybe refine it, edit it, clean it up a little bit, make sure it looks as good as it can and put it into the newsletter. So the introduction you've already done, is those two paragraphs each at the very beginning of the class. Interviews, you've all, at least most of you, have done your adult interview and had the transcript ready to go. So you should also include uh, the youth interview. So you should have two interviews in your newsletter, one from an adult, one from a student or someone who's under the age of 18. Um, Catholic social justice, this section will be new. So this is a new thing for you to write. Um, the past newsletters that I've seen, um, students spend about two paragraphs on this. So, so not too long, but it will take some time and thought. Um, you're connecting your topic to one or more of the Catholic social teaching themes. What are those? Uh, CST themes, those are all the all those themes that we've watched short videos on, all those themes that were on posters in the back of our room when we did the poster competition. Um, so you're going to write a short blurb about how your theme uh, connects to one of those issues, such as life and dignity of the human person, the dignity of work, preferential option for the poor, etc. Um, collect five quotes about your issue. Um, they could be from people, they could be from church documents, at least one has to be from the Bible. Um, the quotes uh, have to be cited. So I don't need a full-blown MLA citation here. I just want you to name the person who said it um, or the document from where it comes, depending on the sort of quote. If it's, a, if it's words that it's someone spoke, then definitely put the person. If it's a church document, write the document. And the scripture passage, you can just write like Luke, chapter 24, six through eight. Just write the chapter and the verses. Statistics, you've done that too. And I shared that um, page with you, all the page that you had submitted. So you wrote out your statistics by hand and you turned it in. I, um, I'm i gonna let Augustine into the meeting right now. Um, but I shared that document with your email uh, two Sundays ago. So if you search my name in your inbox, you should find it. If you have issues finding that page, please email me and I can send it your way. Um, so you're gonna include those 10 statistics and those 10 statistics should be cited as well. So I'll go over in a moment how I'd like those to be cited. So they should be cited. And remember, they're not all from the same website. Most of you did a good job of doing that. Um, action steps, you're supposed to list five action steps. One of the action steps is one that you've done, like your main action step that you're going to create a movie or a short video on, um, but four others, four others that anyone could do to help with this problem. At least five photos, they can be images from the internet, they can be photos you've taken, they can be your own drawings, but five photos or images or graphics uh, throughout, titles throughout, 
for each section. Um, a little blurb on your action taken. Um, and then this is the addition. I, I'm liking what I'm reading so far of the editorials. I think it would be great to include them as well. So that will make one last element. Uh, most of you submitted that editorial, so one to three paragraphs about how coronavirus has impacted your social justice issue. So just a few comments on that quickly. Um, I'll grade those this weekend, but what I'm noticing so far is that not everyone has put the hyperlinks within the text, the body of text as I wanted you to, like this. Um, and then I'm going to ask that you, uh, uh, along with that, I'm going to ask you to put a footnote with your hyperlink um, in the newsletter. So you didn't have to do this on the assignment, but along with having the hyperlink in the text in your letter itself, I'm going to ask you to put a footnote as well. Um, the reason being, it'd be great if these newsletters can be digitally read and reader friendly as well as um, read in person or in a hard copy form. Um, so that means if you're reading the newsletter online, you could click this and it would take you to the link that, um, that it's connected to. But if you're reading it in person, um, you're not gonna be able to see what this blue underlined thing relates to. So you have a footnote that tells you as well. So that's how I want your editorial to be set up. Another word I just noticed, I, some of you were a little bit confused with the prompt. Um, I'm curious about how your social justice um, issue is affected by coronavirus, how your social justice issue is affected, not so much your project. So not how you've had to change your project or go about, you know, interviewing people or, um, or taking an action step. I know that that's affected, that coronavirus has affected your process in, in making this project, but the editorial is, is broader. It's how has coronavirus affected your topic? So how has coronavirus affected um, the homeless population in the Bay Area? Or how has homeless, how has coronavirus affected um, the immigrant population? Um, that sort of a thing. Okay. So this section will be titled Letter from the Editor, Coronavirus, and Your Topic. Okay, so those are the details of the newsletter. We'll go through um, a couple example newsletters just so that I can point out what I'm looking for. Um, this uh, this section has instructions for your video, which you can go ahead and take a look at. Um, we're not going to go over the details for that yet. Okay, any questions on those instructions right now? I just want to point out that there's the rubric for the newsletter as well, and that gives you all kinds of details on how you're going to be evaluated. So if you go to this, you can also see that the due date is listed here. Um, I will need to make this an assignment on Schoology and that will also have the due date nice and handy for you on, on the margin of your page. Um, where is the due date? Where is the There it is, May, Monday, May 18th, 11.59. So check out this rubric in your own time. Um, rubric for the video is here. Um, the Catholic social teaching, because this section is new, remember that you can find a good resource for these teachings, what they all are, what they mean here. And um, or here, and then the videos we watched are here if you, if you wanted to go back to any of those. Um, all right, so let's look at some examples. Okay, we'll start with this. So um, most of these are good, uh, but not all of them are perfect. So I just wanna point out a couple of things. Um, so this is great. There's a really nice title page, clear title, table of contents, makes it easy to navigate. Um, she put her introduction right on the title page and that works fine. 
just those two paragraphs that begins with the statistic. Um, she put her quotes all on one page. That works just fine. You she cited well. So she has the people who said it, Stephen Hawking, or the document from which it comes. This is a church document, and she wrote which one it was. Um, and she has one Bible quote. So that's great. And she has it cited this way with the chapter um, and the verse. Um, this is not cited, so I don't know why that is. Um, but if I were a teacher grading this, I would, uh, that would be taken into consideration as I was grading. There's no citation here. So she needs a citation there. Um, statistics look good. And she has her citations just right next to the statistic, which works. Um, she doesn't have the whole entire URL, and that's fine. She has kind of the basic, um, that will work. That will be just fine. Um, so that's one way you can do that. There, here's her Catholic Church teaching blurb. Um, here are her five action steps. Here are her interviews. So I, um, I think that this would have been stronger if she would have introduced her interviewees. So she jumped right into the question and the answer. Um, but we don't know who it is she's speaking with. Yes, there's a photo here and a name that helps, but I'm curious to know more about why she chose to interv interview Jose. So I'm gonna ask that you all introduce your interviewee. I'll show you what that looks like on another newsletter. Same here, I could have used an introduction to the interviewee. She has a nice blurb about what she did for an action step, so that's good. So let's look at another one. Okay, gang violence in Oakland. Um, this is a very strong newsletter. Um, so Savon, I'm sure you, many of you know him, um, but really, really well done. Clear uh, table of contents. Um, did a little bit of an introduction here, but he even built on it um here which you do not have to do but um works um you'll notice that st statistics he put the statistics here on the side um now savan put his citations at the end so unlike the last newsletter that had the website right next to it he put his citations at the very end like this so, and you'll notice that the other newsletter did not have any sources uh, at the end. So um, I'm fine with you having sources at the end. In fact, I, I, I would suggest it because for your introduction, you had some sources. Um, it might be good just to list them all at the end. Um, you do not necessarily have to do that. You can just include the citations within the newsletter too, if that works. So if you wanna do it like the past newsletter where she put the websites right next to her statistic, that would be fine. But then you have to make sure that you do that throughout. So anything that needs citing um, within the newsletter needs to be cited within the newsletter. Hope that makes sense. Um, so I like the way that Savan introduced um, the people he interviewed. So he explains that um, he went about uh, interviewing people, that he chose to interview his brother who's grown up in Oakland for most of his life. So it gives us a little window into who this person is and how he's connected to the issue. Being an Oakland resident for most of his life, you would have some opinions or experiences um, or ideas about gang violence in Oakland. Um, so whoever they are, however distant or closely they are connected to your topic, make sure you tell us a little bit about who they are, why you chose them. Um, and there's a photo of the people he interviewed. Um, Catholic social teaching here. 
And you'll notice, I think that Savan, it looks like he put his quotes throughout the newsletter. So unlike um, the last one uh, that had it on one page, the student put his quotes throughout and that's fine. So um, those 10 elements that were in the instructions, not, I'm not picky about what order they go in or how you how you put them together as long as it's clear and makes sense. So that's an option. You can just mix your quotes throughout. And then he has his action steps and then what he did to, to take action himself. All right, so those are two good examples. Um, I just want to show you how to do hyperlinks. I noticed that a lot of people in their editorials, they put their hyperlinks at the bottom, or they just, which means that they, they just pasted their URLs at the bottom. But what a hyperlink is, I'm just using this um, document, this random document, it's just my agenda for today, just to show you how to do it. I think a lot of people did not know how to, um, how to create hyperlinks within their text, and that was a problem. So I want to make sure you know how to do that. So the first thing you want to do is, is copy the URL of the website that you want um, your link to, to, to connect to, okay? So it's probably not, it's not going to be Google. I'm just doing Google as an example. So for you, it will be some article related to your social justice topic. So you would highlight the word or phrase. It's going to be the, the most logical connection to uh, the website. Highlight it and then select insert link. Then you paste it like that. And then when you click it, it will take you, open up a new tab and take you to the website. So that's what I want you to do for your editorial. You can also do that for your statistics if you like, um, but for your editorial and for your statistics also if you'd like, um, I would like you to do um, a footnote. So that means um, the way you do that, so for your editorial, I want you to do a hyperlink and a footnote. Um, the way you do a footnote is you insert footnote and then you paste the website down below. So then when you're reading, you can see it, but if you're reading it online, you can just click and go to the page. So I, I want this, um, this style of citing in your newsletter. Does that make sense? Or sorry, I want this style of citing in your editorial. So the editorial section. The other sections, I, you don't need to be so specific. Okay. So that's a lot of information, a lot of details for you. So we're just going to go over the newsletter portion today. Um, I've gotten a, a pulse from the other blocks, so I'll ask you as well. The last thing um, I'll ask, um, because of the change of schedule, I was hoping that the week of the 25th, our last meeting together, we could share our videos, but that's not going to happen uh, because that's going to be independent learning. So my question for you all is, is it important for you to watch each other's videos? In which case, we can make the deadline for you all May 20th for the videos instead of May 22nd, and we could have that Thursday and Friday to watch your videos. So would you prefer to watch everyone's videos and move the deadline up two days to have the video due the night of the 20th? Or would you rather keep the video due on May 22nd, and then we'll just have a chance to watch a few, maybe some volunteers who want to share theirs. So you can go ahead and, and, and tell me your preference in the chat if you want to do it privately or publicly, whatever you prefer. Um, I'm just taking your feedback into consideration. Um, so yeah, as it stands right now, the videos are due the morning of the 22nd and your newsletters are due the 18th. So the newsletters are due on Monday, the Monday before. So I'm hearing a lot of 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, thanks for your feedback. Yep, I'm hearing that. Okay, 
Yeah, that's uh, this is the consensus across the block so far. Everyone wants to keep it the 20 seconds. So it's looking like that will be the case. Um, okay, good. Thanks for your feedback. Uh, the rest of the time is yours to get started if you have not or to keep going if you've started. And I'm here to answer any questions. So I will leave you to it. I forgot to mention one other thing. Uh, this is your final weekend to complete extra credit. So those that movie extra credit opportunity, um, you can complete this weekend uh, by midnight. You send me the five paragraph essay. If you're watching Dead Man Walking, have your parent email me, um, email me an okay, and make sure you use the attached PDF as a guide. So open that up before you watch the movie so that you can connect three of the seven themes of prophetic justice, what it means to be a prophet for justice, to one of the main characters in the movie. If you have any questions on that, feel free to email me um, and you can do that this weekend if you have time, if you'd like to get some extra credit points. <laughs>